You're listening to Tim Bulkley's Five Minute Bible. God the Dalek. Exterminate, annihilate, destroy. Sometimes in the Bible, God sounds like a Dalek. A typical case in point is Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 2. NRSV. When the Lord your God gives them over to you, that's the Canaanites, and you defeat them, then you must utterly destroy them, make no covenant with them, and show them no mercy. Or the NIV. And when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you, and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally, make no treaty with them, and show them no mercy. In case you think some of the more modern and trendy translations make it softer, the new living. When the Lord your God hands these nations over to you and you conquer them, you must completely destroy them. Make no treaties with them and show them no mercy. You see? God the Dalek. And actually, this isn't a joke. There are loads and loads of people around who read their Bible and look at the words and their surface meaning and say, if that's what God's like, I want nothing to do with him. This God of yours is pathological. So how is any ordinary person to deal with this kind of challenge? Well, of course, there are lots of answers. and This is just the first of a series of podcasts. I'll stick them together so you can find them when I do the others. For this one, I want to look at one of the first principles of reading the Bible. Always read the co-text. Co-text is a posh word for the text around the text. People often call that context, but I want to keep context for the other stuff that's around the text, the non-textual stuff around the text. And to use the more specialized word co-text for the text around the text. Not the pragmatics, but the text around. In this case, if we look in Deuteronomy 7.2 at the text around the text, we actually don't have to look very far to spot there's a problem. Because right within this verse itself, we've got exterminate the Canaanites, and then, in the same verse, and while you're at it, make sure that you do not make any treaties with them. Okay, it's quite clear. Either one part or both parts of this verse can't be taken literally because it's just not possible to take them both literally. If the Israelites were to exterminate all the Canaanites, then they couldn't not make treaties with them because there'd be no them to not make treaties with. So one part of this has to be not taken literally. Now, it's a bit difficult not to take make no treaties with them anything but literally. I mean, what metaphorical thing could make no treaties with them be pointing to? But exterminate them? That's different. That's the kind of language we're used to hearing from sports supporters or even sometimes from the combatants in board games. Knock his block off. Wipe him out, and the like. And of course, nobody means it. It would be a funny kind of a sports game nowadays where somebody literally knocked somebody else's block off, even if they were strong enough to do it. And it's certainly a very weird board game. No, when God, in Deuteronomy 7.2, says, exterminate the Canaanites, that's not what's meant. What's meant is, I really hope you have a great victory over the Canaanites. Of course, we've still got a problem, because God is taking sides, taking sides in massive warfare. But it's a different problem from the problem of the lunatic God who demands genocide. That's part one. I hope you're still around when I get to part two. Bye for now.